Hello, I am Maximiliano Ferdman, a mobile web developer and author. I have created this course because JavaScript is evolving every year, and sometimes it's difficult to keep up with the changes. In this course, we will start covering ES6 features such as ES modules and promises, and then following with the new features such as async await, weak set, weak references, and much more. Use these features to create better JavaScript apps. Object literals that sometimes we say JSON, okay? but actually JSON is an spec, like it's, it's hardly defined, and actually these changes are not part of the JSON spec. So that's why it's, it's object literals that at one point, and JavaScript object literal was the same at, at JSON, but now we are making a difference. So, um, for example, I have a name or two variables, two immutable variables or two constants, name and age, and then a function, greet. And then I'm creating a person, and this is an object literal. So now we have a shorthand property. So instead of saying name, name, age, it's equals to age, and greet is equals to greet. That is the normal, because I have the, the key, this is key value. JSON is key value, a key colon value. When the key and the value are just the same, the same name, name and age, we have a shorthand now, and we can just say name, age. Okay? Again, if you do that, you're you are getting out of the JSON syntax. That's not JSON compatible. Okay? It's an object literal. So that's a shorthand, okay, both for properties and methods. But actually a method is just a property of type function. And another new thing that we have is a way to define the property name as a compute variable. What is this? For example, I can create a constant here. The name of the property is in a variable. So I will say uh, the property, the new prop is going to be the email. So then if I want to say the, the name of the person, the age, the email, instead of saying emails, email colon to uh, wherever, I will say instead of email, I want to take the value of the new prop variable, okay? So if I say new prop here, it's not going to work because it will be person.newprop. Make sense? So if I want actually to take the value of the new prop, I need to use brackets square brackets. In this case, I'm saying the email. So the person will have an email now. So if I do console log person.email, I have a greet. What is it? I don't know. Remove that. I have a greet. Remove the greet. I don't need the greet now. When I see the email. Oh, I have, let's see, I have an error because I don't have a comma. Remember that the literal needs a comma. Okay, so I, there we are. So now I'm getting the email. Okay, so again, person.email, you don't see the email. When you see the object declaration, you don't see the email. The email, the name of the property, was defined in brackets. So you, you can kind of uh, dynamically create an object literal uh, based on this. Super in the weeds, but. Uh, so, you know, with like maps, you can have the key be an object, right? Mm -hmm. Does that function similarly with uh, dynamically computed property names or just strings only? No, in, in, in a JavaScript object, the key is always a string. It must be a string. So, that key must be a string. It's, it's, if not, it's not going to work. If you want something different as a key, you need a map. That I will we'll get into a map uh, in a couple of minutes when we get into collections. Okay, but it's, uh, it's always in an option, in a JavaScript object, literal, the key is always a string. But it can be a string with weird characters. Okay, it can be a string with, uh, also, you can use this syntax, okay, that the new syntax that we have, I'm not saying you wanna do this, okay, but I can open here and say postal address with the spaces. Can I do that? Yes, with this new syntax, and then I pass a string. The key is a string, but using spaces that, of course, then you cannot use the dot syntax to use that 
to access that property. Make sense? And you can also even use something like this. You can have a little cow as the, as the key, as the name of a property in an object literal. Any Unicode character will work. Any emoji will work. Again, I'm not saying you are going to use that, but you can. But for that, you need to use this special syntax, this new syntax available in ES6. OK, so let's get into uh, nice operators. So this uh, here comes the part where I think that you will find things that you will use on a daily basis. Nullish coalescing operator. It's a weird name, right? It's a weird name. This is actually pretty cool. And it was actually um, every, every language that appeared after 20, 2005 all, already had this. So JavaScript was kind of behind other languages, such as Swift, Kotlin, um, Dart, and Go, and many others. Okay, talking with, uh, when, when something is optional, when you have nulls, or in JavaScript, when you have also undefined. Okay, so it's common, it's a really common pattern in JavaScript to check all the time if something is null or undefined before using it. And if it's null or undefined, set the default value. And typically for that, we use an if that we know it's not an expression, so I cannot send it as an argument. And we have the expression version that is the ternary operator that probably you have used, where you say, OK, if the value exists, uh, use or use the value, for example, if it doesn't exist, use something like this, like uh, no value. So if I do have a value, of course, I will say hello. And if I don't have a value, or if it's null, okay, it will say no value. Okay. The thing is that, yeah, value, value, eh, I mean, it's not a big deal, okay? But sometimes it's it's a long expression. Sometimes you're executing a function that actually returns the value. So you say, like, get the object, then uh, load the object, and get the value. And if it's not null, I want the value. So then you copy this, and you paste it here. And now it's not so good. You need to go multiple lines. So I mean, it's fine. It's there. Probably you have used this before. But it sounds like we can get it better. And we can. From ES 2020, we have this new operator, the Nullish Coalescing Operator, that lets you remove this. And instead of, so we remove the, the initial part, and we change this with a double question mark. OK? So it's, I, I want the result to be this value. And if there is no value there, Take this other one as an alternative. So for my case, it's going to look like this. So it's the same thing. If I have a value, I see the value. And if I don't have a value, it will take the default one. But it looks cleaner. Remember, most of the things that we are adding to ECMAScript are this idea of syntax sugar. Maybe you're thinking, well, I mean, it's not a big deal because we, we could do that before as well. But yeah, it looks better. It looks nicer. And the, the same operator is available on some um, other languages as well. Not always with the same syntax, but um, it's uh, kind of uh, similar to other languages as well. So double question mark will do the trick. And this is an expression. So that means I can send that directly here in the console log without creating a variable. If it's an if, if I'm using a classic if, I need to create the variable. So I think that looks cleaner now. For finding, we have a lot of properties that will let us find elements in different ways within an array. Okay? We have find that probably you have used before because it's part of ES6. We'll find an element matching uh, one particular lambda expression or function that you pass as an argument. 
that now we have also find index that will return the index of the first element that matches one particular expression. Find last that will find the last one, not the first one. And the find last index that will not return you the value, but the index of the last one. So we will start from, from behind. Again, nothing really complicated, it's just that. New methods that we have to find elements with an array. At, it's kind of weird because you say, okay, what do I need the at? The at will let you get an element at one position, but you can use negative values as well. So for example, if I say minus one here, it's giving me four because it's the last one. So it's a quick way to access the last element of an array, okay? Again, nothing really, really important. A stable sort is not even something that has changed in the API. This is from uh, 2018. I mean, it's sorting, which is okay. So what's the difference? The difference has to do with what happens when you have, for example, two ones here. Which one goes first? And probably you're thinking, well, what's the deal with that? Why this is important? Well. When numbers is not important, but when you have objects, maybe if they are uh, semantically equal, they have different IDs, they're pointing to different objects. So each browser so far was using their own method to pick what happens when you have the same value. And so sometimes you were not getting the same order in different browsers. So now the, the implementation of the ECMAScript has a guideline which explicitly said that they should be returned in the same order that they are defined in the original array. So in this case, this, this one should be first and this one should be second. Again, the API is just the same. They're just changing the, uh, the wording or the, the explanation, the implementation for the browser. Change by copy. This is the last one on collections. Change by copy is, is actually interesting because so far we have methods to sort, as we saw before, to reverse or splice arrays, but they were mutating the same array. So if I have, so if I execute numbers sort, there, this is changing numbers. So it is changing the array, it's sorting the array. Well, now we have a way, instead of changing to mutate that array, to receive another array. In this case, for example, with reverse numbers. So if I run this, I have the reverse numbers, but also I have the original numbers. So I keep both. With sort, we have the same thing. Instead of execute, in, in, instead of doing sort, so if I sort, you can see both are one, two, three. If I say two sort, now I keep the original one. That's the difference. Okay, so it's this is this is behavior that we already have, but now we have another method that actually returns a new array. This is from ES twenty twenty three. Okay, so it's actually pretty pretty new. Make sense? The same happens with the splice. In case you, we wanna get like a, wanna make changes here using a splice, it will create a new array with some elements removed or replaced. Actually, that's the difference. And then we'll, um, with, we'll actually replace one particular index. In this case, it's changing the third element with a 10. So I'm getting a new array, a copy of the array, with that element changed.